Hi, this is Ralph. In this video, I want to continue working with forms. Now, the next form I want to create is going to focus on a couple of new HTML5 types. So, I've got this one form created from the last video where we just did some basic text boxes. We did a type text and a type password. Those are a little bit older, but we did use the newer placeholder uh, attribute. I'm going to create another form here. In fact, let me go ahead and do a little bit of copying and pasting. Okay, so form, method, post, action, pound sign. Now this one's, the, uh, these particular form elements are going to be uh, self-validating form elements. Okay, we could do my closing form tag. And within this form, I'm going to have a field set. And a closing field set. There we go. So, what I want to put in here are some new HTML5 types. I'll go and do a label. And my first one here is going to be for email. Then I'll do an input, type equals email. I'm also going to use the, uh, the attribute required. Okay. And let's see, and that should actually take care of the basics there. I need my closing label tag. Okay, and let me go ahead and save that. And I think I'm going to copy this one and paste. And for this second one, I'll put in web address, but the type is going to be URL. So now I've got these two new elements here. These two, well, they're inputs, but there's new types. Type equals email and type equals URL. So, let me go ahead and save this. I'm going to jump over to Opera, which is the browser I'm using here, and they look just like typical text boxes. Now, since I use those label attributes, or label tags, I can click on the label email to activate the text box. I can click on web address, activate the text box. And they look very, very normal. And in most browsers right now, they are going to appear just like regular text boxes. In fact, a lot of web developers are probably still going to create email boxes and URL boxes using type equals text. But I do want to show you something a little bit new here. Um, I'm going to create another field. I'm going to do an input type submit. Every form will have a submit button. Okay, So let me go ahead and create a input type equals submit value equals send data. Okay, The value attribute for a type submit button, this is going to be the text that displays actually on the button. Let me go ahead and save that. We'll jump back over to Opera refresh. So now we have a more complete form. It asks for email, it asks for a web address, and then I can submit. Okay. Where is it submitting to? It's submitting to wherever the action of the form is. In this case it's just a little dummy action. So this is the email and URL, but let me show this to you in Chrome. Let me uh, start up my Chrome browser for a moment. Here we go. So this is uh, Google Chrome's browser, and I've got these form elements for email, and I can type in something in email, go to web address, type in something in here, and when I try to submit the form, these are going to be checked, and it's actually going to start to validate the data inside of these text boxes to see, is that a typical email address? So let me do user at domain.com, so now it's a normal looking email address. And now I wait, I've got to please enter a proper URL. Actually, let's see if we can just school's website, send data. Oh, still wants the full HTTP colon slash slash. There we go. Now it's a little bit more legitimate. So there's some self-validating features here. Um, yeah, so that's kind of nice. But as we can see, it works in Chrome. It doesn't work in Firefox. It doesn't work in Opera. Um, but this is, you know, it's going to get more improved. A web developer is still probably going to use JavaScript for this kind of stuff, though. So, no need to get overly excited, but it is a pretty cool little feature here. So, that's that shows up in our Opera browser. So, those are some self-validating form elements. Let's check out a, a couple of other new HTML5 form elements. So, I'm going to create another form here. And let me just go ahead and uh, I'm going to just copy the top part of my previous form. Okay, and these are going to be 
I'll do form elements for numbers, okay? And I'm going to have a couple of form elements here. So I'm going to have a... Uh, oh, let me go ahead and get my closing form tag so I don't forget about it. A field set. There we go. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and put in label age. And I'm going to do input type equals number. Min equals 18. Max equals 100. Step equals 1. Value equals 21. Okay. And I'll finish that there. I need my closing label tag. And of course, I need my closing field set. All right, this is a new HTML5 element, type equals number. So let's see what this does for us. Back over to Opera, refresh, form elements for numbers. And let's see, it gives me a little, what looks like a text box, but it does give me these little up and down arrows. Notice it started with 21 because that was the value that I used. I can scroll down to as low as 18 because that's the min, and I can jump up probably to as high as 100. Okay, so if I were to type this in, I cannot enter 105. So let me try this again, 105, and I'll tab away. Oh, it actually did allow me to put that in there. But if I scroll, it won't go past 100. Okay, so that's, that's pretty slick. Let's look at another one here. By the way, so we got the type equals number, min is 18, max is 100, step 100, value 21. Um, let's do another variation of something like this. I'm going to go ahead and take this entire element here, cut copy, and paste. Okay, and let's do another one for age. But in this case, instead of using type equals number, let's do type equals range. And for the min, we'll put in... 0, let's leave the max at 100, we'll leave the step at 1, and let's leave the value at 21. So now it's type equals range. I'm going to go ahead and save this, jump back over to Opera, refresh, and now we get this really slick little slide rule here. So that's pretty cool. So you get this little slider, and this, by the way, this works in Opera. It also works in Chrome. It doesn't work in Firefox, but who knows. Um, I see that Firefox 5 beta is out now, and I haven't tested that yet. So. Now we get this cool little slider. Now the slider is pretty useless unless you also do a little bit of JavaScript to display the result. So let me just go ahead and slap a little bit of that in here. Um, right after this label, I'm just going to go ahead and create a little script. There we go. And uh, let's see, I'm going to create a function called uh, show value. And I'm going to pass an argument called new value. And let's see, within this, we'll uh, just document uh, get element by ID. And I need to actually put an ID. I don't have an ID in there, so I'll have to put one in. So I'll put in age slider dot enter HTML equals new value. Okay. So, in fact, let me go ahead and change this out. I'll, I'll put in... Uh, age display. So I need some place for this to show up. Okay, uh, let me close my curly braces and close out the script. Alright, so basically I'm going to take the value that's chosen from this slider and display it in a little paragraph or something. I think I'll do a span. So let's see, I've got my input slider right there. It's right after my label. Um, let me go ahead and put in right after that label. I'll put a span in there, id equals age display. Okay, so the number that I select is going to show up right in here, age display, right in between the HTML for it. And I need to trigger this function. I need to call it, basically. So inside of my range input, I'm going to use the event handler. Let me scroll to the right a bit so you can see this more. Uh, on change equals my show value function and then I'm going to use the this operator value okay there we go and um, let's see oh I need to get a little typo here let me put in new value make sure that matches up okay so that's looking good so basically 
I'm going to take the value of this object, which is my slider, and I'm going to display that in the inner HTML of the element with ID equals age display, and I've got a span up here with age display. So I've got that saved, jump over to browser, refresh, and now when we run this little slider, we'll actually have the numeric value display. So that makes things a little bit easier. So those are pretty cool. These are all HTML5 elements here. So we've got type equals email and type equals URL. They look just like regular text boxes, but in some browsers they have built-in uh, validation. They'll check to see if they're in the format of an email address or a web address. And then we have type equals number, which looks like a text box, but gives you a little up and down scroll, so you can scroll through numbers. And you also have type equals range, which gives you a horizontal slider, so you can select values in that way. Pretty slick.